Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a Teamer Elemental deck. But it's not just any Elemental deck, it's an Elemental combo deck featuring Zendikar's Royal from Jumpstart, a 5-man enchantment saying whenever a land enters a battlefield under our control, we get to make a 2-2 green Elemental creature token, and the Zendikar's Royal combos quite nicely with the Risen Reef. This is the centerpiece of the deck, a 3-mana 1-1 Elemental, saying whenever Risen Reef or another Elemental enters a battlefield under our control, we get to look at the top card of our library. If it's a land card, we may put it on the battlefield tapped, and if we don't, we can put it into our hand instead. So if we have both the Risen Reef and Zendikar's Royal in play at the same time, let's say we play a land triggering Zendikar's Royal, making a 2-2 green Elemental token, which will trigger Risen Reef, being an Elemental, and then if Risen Reef reveals a land with the ability, we will once again trigger the Zendikar's Royal, and this will keep going back and forth until the Risen Reef reveals a non-land card, putting it into our hand instead. But if we have multiple copies of Risen Reef in play at the same time, we improve our chances of being able to combo off entirely, and essentially draw our entire deck, while making a whole bunch of 2-2 tokens along the way. Now, what's our game plan once we do make a whole bunch of 2-2s and draw into our deck? Because otherwise we're just going to lose the game on the following turn, once we draw from an empty library. Luckily, Risen Reef doesn't actually say draw a card, so if we do have an empty library, we can't lose the game to a Risen Reef trigger, but on the following turn we will still lose. So we've got two different options to make sure we can close out the game on the very same turn. One of them is to just play an Omnath, which when it enters a battlefield deals damage to any target equal to the number of elementals we control. So with enough elementals in play we can just doink our opponent in the face with a whole bunch of damage and win the game. The other option is to play Scampering Scorcher, a 4 mana 1-1 one, one elemental that when it enters a battlefield creates two 1-1 one, one red elemental creature tokens, so that's great with the Risen Reef giving us three different Risen Reef triggers, but more importantly elementals we control gain haste until end of turn, so this is a way for us to give all those two two elemental tokens from Zendikar's Royal Haste, so we can attack on the very same turn, and hopefully your opponent doesn't have a settled wreckage and we can win the game on the spot. So that's the basic idea of the deck. Of course it does rely pretty heavily on us having a Risen Reef in play, so to give us a higher chance of having Risen Reef in play we're also playing the full place of Neoform, which lets us sacrifice any of our 2 drops and search up a copy of Risen Reef and put it on the battlefield with an additional plus 1 plus 1 counter. And that way we will maximize our chances of having multiple copies of Risen Reef in play, because without it our deck doesn't really function. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, starting out with our 1-drops, where we have the full playset of Lenor Elves, allowing us to play a turn 2 Risen Reef, because the sooner we play Risen Reef the better, and the more triggers we will get. And I do think it's worth it to include the Elves, even though we miss out on playing Kahira as our companion, but since the change in the companion rule, making them 3 more expensive, I don't think it's uh, necessarily worth cutting the Elves for, otherwise we could potentially include our Boreal Grazer, but then we would also have to play more lands, and I think uh, we're just better off playing the Elves instead. Then at 2 mana, we've got two copies of Chandra's Amber Cat as a 2-2 Elemental Cat that can tap to add red mana. We can spend to cast Elemental spells. So no Chandra's in this deck, but Chandra Acolyte of Flame can also be quite nice alongside Risen Reef. But just another 2 mana creature that we don't mind sacrificing provides triggers for Risen Reef and can help us cast our more expensive Elementals as well. Then we've got 4 copies of Thunderkin Awakener, 2 mana 1-2 Elemental Shaman with haste, and whenever the Awakener attacks we can choose target Elemental Creature card in our graveyard with toughness less than the Awakener's toughness, and return that card to the battlefield tapped and attacking, and we have to sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. So this is a way for us to get back Risen Reef from the graveyard and get a few additional Risen Reef triggers, and the Awakener can also get back our Scampering Scorcher, and we will get to keep the 1-1 one -one Elemental tokens even if the Scorcher gets sacrificed end of turn. So that's also reason why we often want to block with the Scampering Scorcher instead of the Elemental tokens, so the Scorcher ends up in the graveyard for Thunderkin Awakener. And then we've got the full playset of Leafkin Druid, 2 mana 03 Elemental Druid, taps to add green, and if we control 4 or more creatures, add double green instead. And our deck is quite good at making lots of creatures, especially with Scampering Scorcher, so often a Leafkin Druid will tap for double green in this deck. And then we've got our full playset of Creeping Trailblazer, 
This is kind of our backup plan in case we don't manage to combo off with Xenikar's Royal and Risen Reef. Instead, we can just start beating down with our Elementals as Trailblazer a 2 2 Elemental, giving other Elementals we control plus 1 plus 0. And for 4 mana, the Trailblazer gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn for each Elemental we control. So that can also get out of hand, especially once we start activating it multiple times per turn. And then we've got our four copies of Neoform to search up Risen Reef. Every now and then we can also sacrifice Risen Reef to search up Scampering Scorcher or Omnath if that lets us win the game on the spot. Then we've got our four copies of Risen Reef, the centerpiece of the deck, and the card I'm gonna keep talking about during the entire video. And then three copies of Scampering Scorcher and three copies of Omnath Locus of the Royal, a four mana 3-3 three, three legendary elemental. Omnath enters a battlefield dealing a bunch of damage, and then whenever a land enters a battlefield under our control, we can put a plus one plus one counter on target elemental we control, and if we control eight or more lands, we draw a card. Now this is actually a pretty dangerous line of text, once we're comboing off with Risen Reef and our Xenikar's Royal, because we do risk drawing a card from an empty library if we put too many lands in play. Of course, Risen Reef's ability is a May ability, so we don't have to put the land in play, so we do need to have the restraints once we're comboing off to not put too many lands in place so we don't lose to Omnath's ability. Trust me, I've been there before. And then we've got our three copies of Zenikar's Royal. The fastest I've been able to combo off and draw my entire deck and win the game on the very same turn is turn 5 with this deck, which is fast, but probably not fast enough to make this a reliable combo deck in Historic. So it's definitely more of a for fun deck than a competitive deck. But nonetheless, our deck can do some ridiculous things once it starts going off. And then going over the mana base, we've got four copies of Fabled Passage, which also combos nicely with Xenikar's Royal, giving us two landfall triggers with just one land. And then a healthy amount of basic lands to search up with the passage, including three islands, two mountains, and three basic forests, giving us a total of 11 untapped green sources for the turn on Elf, once we factor in four Breeding Pool and four Stomping Ground. And then we've got two Steam Vents to round out the Shock Lands, and then one of each Check Land with Sulphur Falls, Rootbound Crag, and Hinterland Harbor. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand looks okay. Turn to Leafkin, turn 3 I can Neoform the Leafkin after making green mana with it, and then still play Trailblazer to trigger Risen Reef an additional time. Opponent on a banned ramp deck. Could be Field of the Dead. Never mind, Surge Mare. So this must be a Hotly High Alert type situation. All their opponents stuck on two lanes. And there's a third land. They're probably debating whether they want to play more creatures or play the Watley first. Nope, Surge Mare attacks can block it with green creatures, definitely relevant in this matchup. And they just activated the ability, so maybe they don't have the High Alert or Huntley yet. Discards Yoked Ox and plays another one. Alright, so I think we stick to our plan here. Neoform and then play Trailblazer afterwards. Alright, so we've got some lands in play. Omnath can potentially help us take out Watley. High alert's gonna be a bit more difficult. And once again our opponent activating Surge Mare, so they don't have the best hand here. Opponent discards another Surge Mare. Ooh, good turn for Fabled Passage alongside Xenikar's Royal. Get that Risen Reef value. Fetch up a forest in case we draw an elf. And double Reef in hand, so next turn we should be able to combo off pretty easily. I guess we might not have the mana to play Omnath or Scampering Scorcher afterwards. So we'll see. 
I guess if we draw lands, play reef, play lands, chances are pretty high that we can get there. Plays another yoked ox. Ooh, Fable Passage even. Alright, this has to be good enough. And there's a Scorcher. We're not hitting land, sadly. There we go. We might not be 100% to draw our entire deck, but we should definitely have enough creatures in play to win the game here. And yeah, this is what it looks like once our deck is going off. A lot of triggers. And no Omnath in place, so... I can draw as many cards as I want, we still had 4 mana, and then I could eventually play Scampering Scorcher or just Omnath and burn their face. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand's missing a 2 mana creature to Neoform. Technically I could Neoform the Elves and then Neoform the 2 drop we get, but that's not really where we want to be. I think I still keep. We have a lot of two mana creatures we can draw in the meantime. And we're on the draw, so we get two draw steps. Scampering Scorcher gives us something to ramp towards. I'm really just hoping for a two drop here. Opponent with a Fibble Thip. And there's a Trailblazer, nice. Not going to be able to save Fable Passage until after Zendikar's Royal, I'm afraid. And Excavator's opponent is on some sort of Underworld Breach combo deck. Doesn't look like Kethys since they're in the Jeskai colors, but... They don't need Kethys if they're playing Breach. I'll get an Island so we have... Potentially access to double Neoform. Play a land, attack, still Neoform afterwards. Because I could use the pump ability on Trailblazer if they double blocked. Hope to find a 2 drop. Oh, math isn't bad. But next turn I'm probably still playing the Scorcher first. And there's Lurus to combo with all these cheap artifacts in their graveyard. And then eventually they'll find Underworld Breach, Mox Amber, and they can keep comboing until they win the game with uh, Thassa's Oracle. Now I could also just play Omnath and kill Lurus here. It's probably the play. We'll try and interact a little bit. And we'll put a counter on the reef. And the next turn we can play Scorcher. If I draw like a Fable Passage, maybe Zenikar's Royal is better. There's Mox Amber, and do they have Underworld Breach? Is a question. Nope, just a Thassa's Oracle. Well, that's kind of a good sign, I guess. Means we're not dead yet. Keeps one card on top. Steam vents tapped and passes. 
All right, so decisions, decisions. If I can kill the opponent's excavator, I should try doing so. Although that does require sacrificing Risen Reef to Neoform to get another Omnath, which I'm not really looking forward to. But maybe I can get some Reef value first with a Scampering Scorcher, and that will make it better. Put counters on Omnath and on the Scorchers. Send in these two. And then we'll have to let go of Reef for the greater good. And I can keep the original Omnath. Oh no, Spell Pierce. That was unexpected. And there's a breach. I guess they had spell pierces in the graveyard. They could have looked. I mean, I probably would have still made that play because we have to stop the excavator from filling their graveyard further. I know my responsibility. The fairy means Mox Amber now makes mana, but they forgot to tap it for mana first. So they missed out on one mana, which could be pretty important here. Spell bomb, mills for two. So now they just want to keep looping Mox Ambers. And yeah, now that they have double Mox Amber, they will be able to play an extra Excavator. And then with two Excavators, they can keep fueling the Breach which requires three cards to be exiled from their graveyard. And so once they mill their entire deck, they can win with Thassa's Oracle, which they can cast thanks to the mana from Mox Amber. And that's why killing the Excavator was so important. So their opponent's pretty much guaranteed to win here. As long as they don't mess up. And there's another excavator. And that should speed up the process once they play Mox Amber. It's possible they would have still been able to combo off even if I killed the excavator with Omnath. Since they had a pretty full graveyard to begin with. So they have 8 cards remaining, Devotion to Blue is 4 already, so one more Mox Amber should do it. I guess they need to cast 2 more to get enough mana. So yeah, the principle is essentially the same as the Kathis combo deck, but instead of using Kathis to access the graveyard, they're playing Underworld Breach. Wouldn't be able to tell you which version is better, but my guess is that in sideboarded games, Kathis can play a better fair game without access to the graveyard as opposed to Underworld Breach. So the Breach version maybe has the edge in best of one, as it doesn't have to run a four color mana base and gets away with just uh, the Jeskai colors. Whereas Kathis combo maybe is a bit more flexible in best of three. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Doesn't have Reef or Neoform is the biggest issue. But we've got good mana, good ramp. So if we ever draw any of our payoffs, we should be in pretty good shape. Turn on Firebrand can take out our elf. And there's a reef, nice. So play reef and a tap land. 
I could technically wait on playing the Reef and then play Awakener alongside it in the same turn to try and get more value. But if our opponent keeps up a burn spell, then they can still kill the Reef in response to the first trigger. And if they had a burn spell, they might have killed the Leafkin anyway. Yeah, let's play the Reef anyway. And if they kill the Reef, we can always get it back with Awakener, so it's not too bad actually. So this seems fine. Goblin Warchief. Alright, so they were goblins. With turn 1 Firebrand nowadays, I'm putting my opponent on a burn deck more often than I'm putting them on a goblins deck. Since Firebrand's not often running goblins anymore. Alright, let's try and get some Scampering Scorcher value with Reef. And then I'll keep the Fable Passage in hand in case we pick up Zenikar's Royal later. And I won't be able to play Scorcher plus Awakener here. Because Leafkin only makes green, but I might draw into another Leafkin, which I can play if I play it like this. So I wouldn't mind drawing another Leafkin. Alright, all the red cards instead. Um, I guess I'll leave back two creatures here. We'll just send like this. I'm happy jumping with the Scorcher since we can get it back with Awakener. Double Warchief. Into a Trash Master. Alright, it's pretty good. No attacks. Omnath can kill one Warchief. Killing Warchief might be more important than the Trash Master, as that can potentially let them cast a Muxus, even if they don't have a land. So let's do that. And put some plus one counters on. One on the reef so it doesn't die to another firebrand, I guess. Play Amber Cats. And now Omnath starts drawing us cards. Put counter on Amber Cats. And then we'll just stay back for now. Brush Taunter. Alright, wasn't expecting that one. Another Scorcher, looks great. Now actually let's play the Leafkin first and then I can give the Leafkin haste with the Scorcher so it can tap for mana right away. I'm not fetching with Passage in case we draw into a Xenikar's Royal. Put counter on... doesn't matter too much. Since we're probably not attacking into the Brush Taunter. Would love to find a Neoform or another Reef. Putting counters on Awakener could also be useful, so it can get back more creatures from the graveyard. Alright, what are we working with? Trailblazer. Play Omnath. Killing Goblin Warchief. And our opponent scoops it up. Probably could have gone just face as well and attack with everyone. And I don't think the Brash Taunter would have mattered too much. Could have also played some more Scampering Scorchers and Trailblazers, so. Yeah, even without the infinite combo, sometimes we can just win by going wide and having a few trailblazers in play. 
on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a potentially great hand. Turn two Risen Reef, turn three Risen Reef, turn four Scorcher up against Yorion, which might negate some sort of land-based Field of the Dead deck, which typically doesn't have a lot of cheap removal, which is good for the Risen Reef. And then we don't mind hitting some lands. Alright, so we could be stuck on mana a little bit here. Opponent can put Yorion in their hands, plays a Thought Erasure instead, probably takes Risen Reef. But then the Awakener can get back Risen Reef, so it's not too bad. And an untapped land. So maybe the play is Awakener Druid instead of Scorcher. Yeah, I can buy that. And new form could be useful too. Alright, so things are going well. But we might see a sweeper here. No double whites. So it seems unlikely. Alright, Deafening Clarion will do the trick. But we can rebuild here. So Risen Reef into Leafkin plus Elves could be the play. Yeah, I can go Leafkin into Scorcher, give it haste, but I wouldn't be able to use the two green mana anywhere. If they have another sweeper, my hand's not great, but we do have access to a lot of lands. This is seven mana. And a Hydroid Crisis for five. That's acceptable. Probably want to start by getting another reef. Awakener can also do some stuff. And then they want to play Omnath, killing the Hydroid. Seems all right. Put a counter on, I guess, on that in case of another deafening clarion. Alright, we refilled our hands, lots of lands in play, can put an upkeep stop to fetch with passage before drawing, or we can keep them in case we end up drawing a Zendikar's Royal. It's possible they're playing a niv Reborn deck with all these different multicolor cards. They don't have a great target for Teferi here, I guess the Lanor Elves, and their opponent just explodes, just too much value from Risen Reef. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play. The mana's a little awkward. Otherwise, this hand would have been quite good. This is better. 
probably bottoming the Amber Cat, so we can go Druid into Neoform, getting Reef into Scorcher. Facing turn one planes into Speaker of the Heavens, so the life gain deck. Well, if they get Soul Warden in play, they can gain a lot of life if I'm going off with uh, Zendikar's Royal. So that could be problematic. Looks like they're on an Angel version instead with Bishop of Wings into Resplendent Angel and Author of Various Angels. But at least her opponent's not going to have much removal here. So that's the good news. Next turn we can decide between Scorcher and Omnath. Get some more Reef Triggers. Angel Vitality. Luckily they didn't have the Resplendent Angel, which would have been a little scarier. So yeah, Omnath doesn't kill much besides Speaker, but I guess Speaker can threaten to make Angels next turn. So maybe it's still worth killing. And then we'll get our value next turn. There's Resplendent Angel, so that will make an Angel token end of turn. So we're essentially on a two-turn clock here. And there's not much I can do about it. And I can't even play this land untapped. So yeah, best I can do is Scorcher. And hope to it's a lot of lands. Is there a point in attacking with Omnath? Yeah, I guess there is. Alright. So let's see if we're dead or if we get another turn. It's not impossible for us to win next turn, but we'll have to get pretty lucky. Drawing a Fabled Passage might be our best bet. Well, there's a Fabled Passage. So, I think the plan is Zendikar's Royal. And then play Fable Passage, hope to get lucky with Risen Reef triggers. And then I'll still have the mana to Neoform a Risen Reef for a 4-drop to give our team haste or to get another Omnath. Is there a better line of play here? I don't think so. Playing another Risen Reef just doesn't do it here. We need to win this turn. And then the counters don't matter too much, I don't think. Alright, so we get one more shot at finding some lands. And I think we bricked off here. So I can Neoform the Risen Reef for Scampering Scorcher, but it's not going to be enough here. And Omnath also doesn't do it. Well, you can see how if we did get extremely lucky and hit all lands with the Risen Reef, it would have been technically possible to win the game here. So that's what I was aiming for. All right, GG's.
On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a great hand. Turn to Reef, and then a Leafkin, and another Neoform for maybe a second Reef. And that's why the Elves are in the deck. Facing a blue-green deck. And a grow spiral. Alright. Typically don't mind playing against other ramp decks. Wilderness Reclamation. Alright. I guess I'm not too happy to see that one. So, where do I begin? Leafkin Druids. And then we can Neoform it. Alright, get in for one. So we've got a great board if we get to untap with it. And even if they have a board wipe, we can still awaken her to get back Risen Reef. There's Uro. One card that Historic Wilderness Reclamation gets as opposed to Standard is a Magma Quake. A powerful sweeper with X in the cost, which we might see here. Yep. So two to all creatures. So plan this reef into Awakener, getting back reef. Alright, so we are still ramping nicely. Although no Zendikar's Royal in sight yet. Although the presence of an instant speed sweeper in the opponent's deck means comboing and drawing my entire deck is a little risky if the opponent can just wipe the board and then we end up decking on the following turn. Double Reclamation. If their last card's a good one, we're in trouble. Just a land, alright. So your opponent stop decking, but they do have search for Ascanta, which will transform next turn, and then Ascanta plus Reclamation is quite powerful, as you can imagine. So what's my plan this turn? We do have access to a ton of mana. Awakener can get back Risen Reef. So I don't think I can win this turn, realistically. But I can give myself a great shot at winning next turn. I think that starts by playing another Awakener. And then we get double Reef back before we play any more Elementals. Alright, there's a Royal. I don't think I can win with Royals this turn, since I wouldn't be able to play Omnath or Scorcher afterwards. Alright, opponent decides to give it up. So, not sure what would have happened this turn. Like, I can attack first with the Awakeners to put double Reef in play before doing anything else. But the problem is, I can't draw too many cards, because I still need to leave myself with enough cards in library to then be able to win the game on the following turn and maybe combo off. So it was actually kind of an interesting spot. The play might have been to just attack with the Awakeners, maybe just play an Omnath and 
deal some damage to their face, and then next turn play Royal, maybe even keep the Fable Passage in hand to then be able to play a land after a Royal and kind of take it from there. But uh, yeah, beating Wilderness Reclamation is always a nice feeling. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.